It's at the mid-elevations where we're seeing the loss of native tree species, more wildfire, and more erosion. As Steve Kiggins tells us, major strides have been made in understanding the kinds of fish-focused forest practices that impact downstream habitats and fish survival. Salmon recovery looks and sounds a lot like heavy machinery digging into the south fork of the Toodle River in Cowlitz County. This is the Lower Brownwell Reach. This summer, the Lower Columbia Fish Enhancement Group hopes to jumpstart natural recovery, placing logs and boulders into the river, creating spawning and rearing habitat for endangered salmon. Salmon recovery can also be seen at Eco Park Resort along the North Fork Toodle River. They're catching little newts all around, so. Well, your story goes a little further than that. When she was about five, six, she thought it was Jurassic Park when we went down there. It was Dinosaur yeah. Creek. When they'd go look for agates, her sister would scare her about that. Don't run off because, you know. Mark W. Smith owns the resort. His daughter, Cheyenne Smith, grew up with Eagle Park in her backyard. <laughs> Pulling Creek is where Cheyenne hunted for those rocks. It flows through the resort into Toodle's North Fork. But a culvert on the property failed. The clog flooded a road, cutting off fish to spawning habitat. And it was a total barrier to fish. Literally plugged this six-foot culvert and flowing across the road, dumping in sediment and gravel. And having adult uh, coho and steelhead being observed swimming across that gravel road. State law requires private landowners to replace culverts blocking migrating salmon. And replacement gets expensive fast. And of course, my first question is always like, what's it going to cost me? You know, I mean, how are we going to get this done? Lawmakers devised a state cost-sharing grant program to help landowners just like Smith. It's called the Family Forest Fish Passage Program. So he applied. And in July, crews ripped out the failed culvert. And now a 54-foot concrete bridge crosses Poland Creek. The Family Forest Fish Passes Program is managed by three state agencies, the Washington State Department of Natural Resources, the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife, and the Washington State Recreation and Conservation Office reviewed and ranked the crossing on Eco Park Resort property and determined through multiple regulatory requirements that the state would cover all the costs to remove and replace the barrier. But very seldom, as a taxpayer and landowner in the state, do you get a rebate. And I look at this as kind of a rebate, not only to me, but to everybody who wants to fish and, you know, wants to see fish flourish, because this project will give us a direct value coming back to the North Fork Toodle River. Since 2003, the State Department of Natural Resources says the program has eliminated 460 barriers and adding more than 1,300 miles of fish habitat statewide. <laughs> the Lower Columbia Fish Enhancement Group also sponsored the Eco Park Resort Project, this new crossing restores more than two and a half miles of salmon habitat. That will be here for, for generations because it actually is fit to, to match the, the system. Projects like this and, and the changes just bring you a lot more hope. The sound of rumbling logging trucks can also play a role saving salmon. Forests aren't just a piggy bank that you can break open when it's 40 years old. They have a whole lot of other jobs to do. Responsibly managed private forests not only sustain livable wages, the watersheds bookend the life cycle of iconic and threatened species. For us, the Skoi Community Forest really is a, a salmon recovery project. Load after load, Washington's working forests remain cornerstone of our region's environment, economy, and culture. Near Ashford, along Washington SR7 in Pierce County, thousands of acres of evergreens make up the Nisqually Community Forest. It's also where watersheds provide critical habitat for species like steelhead trout and Chinook salmon. This summer, scientists from the Nature Conservancy toured Pierce County, where Nisqually Community Forest Board President Justin Hall shared methods he hopes can save vital salmon habitat. They truly are, to me, a forest species. This is where they begin and end their life, and they give back to the forest that has given to them. This is Busy Wild Creek federally recognized critical habitat for endangered fish, and headwaters for the Mashal River, which eventually joins the Nisqually. Around 5,500 acres among the busy wild is owned by the Nisqually Indian tribe and the Nisqually Community Forest. By plucking some Seth Zuckerman from the nonprofit Northwest Natural Resource Group 
says responsible forest management can protect habitat. If you manage the forest for a multiplicity of objectives, you're going to do better at serving the needs of society. The community forest management plans pivot from a clear-cutting and plantation model towards a regime called ecological forestry, a method that aims to regrow forests with native species. If we can take the average age of the forest behind us here from the current you know, 35 to 40 years of age and get it to 80 to 100 years of age, we can put in a significant amount more water into the Michelle that this is a tributary of in the late summer where you know, salmon need it at that point. Among other strategies, ecological forestry includes pre-commercial thinning that removes smaller and younger trees to help remaining stands grow older faster. Zuckerman says this method also improves understoried biodiversity. But ecological forestry doesn't only impact the health of a forest, the principles can also directly impact salmon habitat. Salmon don't just live in rivers, they live in watersheds. And everything that happens from the creek all the way up to the ridgetop matters to a fish. When forests are densely packed, tight canopies deflect snow from accumulating on the understory, which can minimize snowpack density. Zuckerman says Northwest Natural Resource Group launched a project across multiple forests in our region, hoping to learn how to adapt forestry management to help increase diminished snowpack. We're looking for ways of finessing our management of the canopy so that it will do better at trapping and accumulating snow. Compared to forests with dense stands, Zuckerman says reducing trees per acre in higher elevations inside Nisqually Community Forest left gaps on the forest floor. Those gaps leave room on the ground where snowfall has a chance to condense and grow. Over the past several years, Zuckerman says the project revealed increased snowpack helps the soils on the forest floor retain moisture, a possible defense to mitigate risk of fire. Besides the potential benefits for forest health, Zuckerman says helping snowpack last longer can also leave a direct impact on salmon survival. Slowing down how it melts during the spring so that we can extend the runoff season and again provide that essential runoff to the stream during the hottest period of the year. From increasing access to habitat for rearing and spawning salmon, and deploying innovative methods for managing private forests. This bridge not only did the future for the fish, but it gave a future to us. Landowners far removed from Puget Sound are playing key roles, helping save iconic species threatened with extinction. You know, all of us here in the Pacific Northwest, we're citizens of Forest Nation, right? And so it's essential to understand this factor that's surrounding us and important to all of us. Reporting from Pierce in Cowlitz Counties, Steve Kiggins, Northwest Now.